I have a, a piece of perspex that I already had cut in a circle. It's actually from a light box for animation and it has a hole, a small hole here. <clears throat> and I thought, you know, I know I'm not going to use it again, so I thought I might actually do um, a, like a, a resin wave on here. I've never used this, done a circle before. And I say a circle is actually quite difficult to do a composition for a circle. So um, I'm going to have a go at it. So what I've done is, I, because I'm going to have to fill that in, I've put a piece of, just a piece of MDF on the back, and I, I glued it on with liquid nails, so that's not going to come off. And that will be a way of hanging it as well. And it will also make it sit out from the wall a little bit, so it won't just sit, sit flat on the wall. And I've put some blue painter's tape all around it. I'll just cut that off, the edges off with a scalpel. And I'm going to do a, a, a kind of a, a wave with a bit of sand. Um, because I'm actually working on a large piece and I know I'm going to have some left over, so I'm going to work on that, on this piece. So it's a bit of an experiment. And before I do it though, um, because this is plastic and resin is a plastic as well, I'm just concerned that it might like, peel off. I don't know. I, I've seen people use Perspex before, so, but I don't know how, you know how well it takes to it or whether it, it might just chip off at the sides. So I'm going to actually sand it. I'm going to make the surface really rough so that it actually will adhere well into the surface. So I'm just going to use a bit of sandpaper and really give it a good sand before I do the resin on it just to make sure that it actually sticks to the surface. First I put down a layer of clear resin and then I have now just put some gold resin which I'm blowing through the clear resin to create some lacing. And I'm sprinkling some sand, some very white sand, and some chips of, of glass and some small rocks into the wet resin. Then I started to do the top layer, which eventually I actually went over the top of, but I'm showing you anyway, um, because this is how I did the bottom part, which I kept. But this part, didn't really work out so um, but it's still interesting to see and to see how I did this and to see how the bottom part actually developed here I'm sprinkling some more of these glass rocks and I'm sprinkling little bits of Chip, chips of resin and some chips of crackling paint to create a texture. That looks nice. Oh, yes. But yeah, I think I need to do another layer. I'm not going to get away with it in just one layer, I don't think. But I like parts of it, I really like that. That was when it was curing and it's just, you know, pushed lead and more rivulets rather than blending. So that looks nice. Cool. That, I like that up there. So I might do another layer, just like around this, this bottom part. I'll keep the top part, but actually do just a bit more there. But yeah, interesting. Okay, I wasn't happy with that layer, so I'm starting again. I'm starting again, and I've because there was a lot of resi blast under there, and I had so much trouble trying to do anything on top of it. So I have put a, like a thick paste, like a it's an acrylic paste, and then I put some white white acrylic over the top. I've left this because I like this. Now I'm just going to try and do a base base for this. I'll put some uh, small container. Here I'm laying down some clear resin and letting it bleed down through the rocks. 
and I'll heat it with the heat gun. And I'm spreading it out and sprinkling some of the more of the sand into the wet resin. Now I've got some gold powder mixed into some clear resin and I'm dragging that through and some white pigment and that now is bleeding through the clear resin and through the gold and the sand and I'm sprinkling some more of these lovely little glass rocks to create some more texture so now I'm putting some white white resin at the top I realized that the first time time I did the background the problem was my composition so I've decided to work more methodically with the way I applied the resin and with more purpose so I needed some a larger amount of white more white than I actually realized to create the lacing so now I see how I'm pouring tipping it and letting the, the resin and the colors all pour through the rocks so it has a, a sense of a natural occurrence and see I'm applying the colors in from a dark dark tones and light tones to create some depth and I've just done a small dirty pour so that will create a nice blending of colour rather than letting it become too stripy. I thought the first time I did it was just too stripy. So this is blended a lot better so it's a, this was a better um, pour. And I'm creating a sense of depth. Can you see how it's, it's, it's a lot deeper at this end and I'm getting narrower over the other side of the round. So this is creating a kind of a sense of depth. So this is improving the composition that I did in the first pour that I did and see how the heat gun it pushes the white over the top of the dark color which is how you get the lacing and the clear resin applying the clear resin also helps to move the white resin over the top of the darker tones so here I'm just keep adding the tones as I see fit to create the illusion of a wave and create the sense of, of depth and texture in, of the wave. So there's really is quite a lot of white being applied at different times and of course th during this whole process the resin is starting to cure so as it starts to cure it actually is a lot easier to get the lacing and to um, for it to stay in the way I liked I liked it. See, I'm picking up the tops of the waves and the edges of the waves with the white resin, and I'm angling the heat gun to push push it in the push it on the into the angles that I wanted so it's just a constant touching up and establishing the contrast so creating highlights and at this point I can see that it's starting to get too too light and too much white and I'm losing my depth here So now I start to apply some dark tones. I mean this is the same technique that you would use for doing any painting is that you would towards the end of your work you start to apply your your highlights and you, you deepen your tone your darkest tones so it's the same way you would create a painting. It's just quite not quite as much control though. <laughs> So I decided to put a little bit more green into the foreground. So 
so that it will blend better with the sand, the tones of the sand and the little colours that I put into the sand. And now the resin was actually curing, so I wasn't sure how this was going to go, but I just put a blob of the gold resin and heated it and it um, created an interesting effect. I hadn't seen that happen before. I'm flicking some paint with a toothbrush here to create some foam on the waves. This is just like rough, a rough sea. It's quite good. I just got to, might do a bit of handwork just to make it a bit more convincing and I'm not sure what I'll do there. Let's play with it a bit, I think. That's better, boy. Took a long time to get the hang of doing something like that. That's, that's better. I think I might have saved it. I think it's still tacky, but I've just, this is just a, some resin drips. I always keep them just in case I might um, use them. And I'm thinking I might put that there. Um, it'd be nice if it was a bit of a white halo, but I don't think so. Maybe I should put a white halo before I stick it down. I had a template for the circle, and then I, I cut it out. But you've got to heat it first with the heat gun, so it gets soft. So I'm thinking of putting that there, but I think we might, I might need a small halo of white around it. Might put a bit of resin there around it afterwards, just a little glow. That, that'll stick. Okay. I just did one of my little gold coils, it's just from, this This is just jewellery wire and I'm going to put that on there, just put a bit of, I'll put a blob of clear resin over the top of that at the end and I've just also, just to balance that, I'm going to put some like shell like shapes down the bottom, just, I'm just going to put some little shell like shapes with the wire down there just to link them together. I mean, there is a 3D link, but I want to link the texture. It's very subtle. Just some different shapes. Let's make a few of those and stick them in there. Still soft, so I'm going to stuck a few in there. Just to draw a link from there. To that gold disc there. I'm definitely going to put some, a glow of white around that. It's um, it's too dominating that circle. I just I need to soften around that one. I'm just going to do a tiny bit more work on this. I've got some resin. Up. This is the next day, and I'm applying another layer of resin. So I'm laying down some clear resin onto the parts of the waves where I want to apply some more white foam and edges. I want to pick up some more highlights. And see how I'm pushing the white back into the clear resin and wiping away where it's, it's you know, there's too much, where it's diffusing the colour. So I keep adding clear resin and adding more highlights. This is also creating a texture on top of the, the first layer, which is rather nice and I end up keeping that texture at the end. So I've picked up this unusual wave shave at the front, which I, as you will see later, decide to do something with that. So I'm just picking up the edges of the wave, so where it's, it's about to crash down into the depth of the wave in between. It's a few days later 
and the resin has, has cured and now I decided to do some handwork all over the piece. So here I'm applying very small marks, dots and, and blending with a very small brush and some white acrylic paint. I'm using quite a thick acrylic paint, it's a, a structure called, uh, it's a, actually Matisse structure paint so it will sit quite well on top of the resin. I, I actually haven't sanded the resin or done anything else to the surface, it's just sitting there on top. At the bottom of the round there were, I had created some unusual wave shapes which weren't really convincing of waves but I thought it'd be really nice to create a foreground so I decided to put some hints of rocks that are underneath the waves there. So I'm now applying very small and detailed marks giving the illusion of a rock peeping through the foam and the water that's, been, that's splashing over the rocks. So it was a lot of very fine handwork that took me quite a long time to do. Um, I was using the colour from the bottom of the round, the sand, I was using those colours, I was blending and creating a link with those colours and also the colour of the sun shape at the top. So there was a link of, of colour and tone. And it was quite easy to paint on this surface. surface. Um, I did not have, didn't use any other additives so the surface was very receptive to the paint. Sometimes I would thin the paint out with a bit of water, sometimes I would thicken the paint with more paint, the, sometimes I would thicken the paint uh, depending on the effect that I wanted, if I wanted the colour to come through or I wanted to block the colour out so it would be more transparent in some areas and the paint was more opaque in other areas. So I actually hand created some very fine lacing just by using very small brush strokes and I picked up the edges of the waves and the, the spray, the sea spray, I just used very small tiny stippling of white paint. Sometimes I would wash a bit of colour over, over an area to deepen the tone. And that area there, that little foamy area there, it actually, that was created because it was, the resin was actually curing as I did it and it created a really unusual shape which was rather nice. So here I'm putting the, I'm actually creating the lacing. So just like fine little lines, just little sort of holes I guess you'd say, so holes and rivulets where the, where the foam in the wave is running across the edge of the rock. So I would constantly stop and assess what I was doing. I'd stand back, get up from my chair and stand back and look at what I was doing to make sure that the whole composition was working. Um, you can work, get caught up in detail. Well, I do. <laughs> so you're best to get up every now and look at what you're doing and assess it. I actually decided to spray it with a archival spray gloss rather than do another layer of resin because if I did another layer of resin I would have lost a lot of the um, texture that I've got there so it's actually left a really nice surface if you can see it's very shiny and it will it will make sure that um, that none of that acrylic paint comes off
because you need to put something over acrylic paint if you paint onto resin. So there's no way that's coming off. So I did a couple of layers, and um, this is this is what I use. It's a Krillian UV archival. It's a gloss varnish, and I just did a couple of layers, and that really has given it a nice finish. So rather than another layer of, of resin, and I think that's done the job. It's finished now. So I'm quite pleased. I'll see. Please, if you like my video, press the like button. If you'd like to see more of my, my work and my process, then subscribe to my channel. If you're interested in any works, there is a contact link in the description. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time.